Mike and I uh, had we knew each other already, and uh, we thought about uh, ways of which we could collaborate. Once Chris had bought this really fascinating idea in terms of the genetic influences of caffeine, that it was a case of sort of developing that into, okay, well then how do we tie this into a potentially relevant uh, sports-specific performance that we can study in the lab? The gene that we were looking at codes for an enzyme in the liver that is the primary enzyme responsible for caffeine metabolism. So when you take in caffeine, it goes to your liver, your liver breaks it down into a lot of other substances. It had already been determined that there was a particular very small variation in your DNA sequence of that gene that caused some people to metabolize caffeine really rapidly and cause other people to metabolize it more, more slowly. I uh, got in touch with uh, the biology department and was fortunate enough to find uh, Marta and uh, her students. They were able to uh, do some really nice work and give us some really um, good data fast that rather than us uh, having to, to learn how to do the entire process from scratch. So they were, they were a huge help. What we can see, for instance, in this gel at the top here, this bright dark band that we're seeing is that 920 base pair fragment of the CYP gene. We then split it in half and half of it was then treated with a restriction enzyme. The restriction enzyme recognizes where that mutation is located and then depending on the fragment lengths that we get as a result of this treatment we can identify whether it's a C or an A or a heterozygous. The allele that you're referring to is the presence of a single nucleotide polymorphism and that's just a long term to mean that there's a change in one nucleotide in the gene sequence. And if there's a change in that gene sequence, either an A base or a C base at that specific position, it results in a change in the activity of the enzyme. The bike is basically designed to, um, as closely as possible, simulate the conditions that you would get in a real road ride. And so you can see Dan's riding the bike here, and he's actually looking at a screen that is simulating what the road would look like on a certain terrain. So we can actually design courses and sort of create a program that has a certain topography. So if we want to design a hill or if we want to design it as a flat course or something of that nature, and it will actually adjust the workload accordingly in order to make it harder to climb a hill or easier to go down a hill powdered form of caffeine that looked exactly like plain old-fashioned white flour. So with the placebos, we just filled a couple of gel capsules with white flour. With the caffeine, we would weigh out the proper dosage of caffeine and we would fill up the appropriate number of gel caps with that, uh, with that powder and, um, and administer it to the subjects that way. They got uh, six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of their body weight. So it was individualized per you know, body weight. Um, that would be the equivalent of about uh, 24 ounces of, uh, of Starbucks coffee. We found that the people who had the genetic variation that caused them to metabolize caffeine more rapidly actually uh, were the responders to caffeine supplementation versus the people who had the variation that caused them to metabolize slowly. Um, most of the literature with any ergogenic aid, there are responders and, and non-responders, and this actually shows which gene and how it varies. In general, you expect that caffeine may have a, um, an ergogenic effect on performance, which should actually help them to perform better when they are um, in the presence of caffeine, and in general, that's what we saw, but um, when we took a little deeper look and actually looked at the effect of um, genotype, what we saw, which was consistent with Chris's initial hypothesis, was that the individuals um, responded differently in terms of their effect to caffeine depending on the genotype that was actually present. I think doing collaborations are always fun because you discover new things when you have different disciplines working on the same project.